good? All the time. All the time. God is good. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Fall River. Um, announcements. We have a trustees meeting after church. Correct. Um, John Fisk will be here for me next week. Uh, Brian, uh, welcome. He is here for us this week and next week as Melissa's uh, traveling on vacation. Yes. Arizona. In Arizona. Oh, oh my heavens. Well, at least it's a drive. At least it's a drive. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's still hot. It's still hot. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other announcements? That was easy. Uh, will you rise and join me in the responsive call to worship that's printed in your bulletin? I'll read the parts in the Roman type and ask that you respond with the parts in italics. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For God will speak peace to his people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. And righteousness will look down from the sky. Our opening hymn is Will You Let Me Be Your Servant. It is directly inside page two inside the front of your bulletin.
Please be seated. Is that new to the church? Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah that's good. Oh, Brian did great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now is time for joys and concerns when we lift our joys to celebrate them together as a church and when we lift our concerns to pray uh, about them together. So Jeff will come around with a microphone uh, and ask that you share. Um, I did call uh, Claudette and Edgar this week. Uh, Claudette is improving. Uh, she's not there yet, uh, but she's better than she was. She's in less pain than she was. Um, so they hope to join us uh, some week. I think everything is just extremely slow. Um, so uh, in order for her to get here for a 10 o'clock worship, she'd have to be up at 5, is what I'm understanding. <laughs> so maybe we'll have like a, an evening hymn sing or something. <laughs> um, so. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I certainly had joy is to have uh, Brian here. Um, I think it's fan fantastic. Melissa has an array of people, and we would love, you know, she's brought us an organist. She's certainly brought us uh, people to play the piano. Uh, today it's guitar, and we'll see Brian a couple more times uh, as Melissa uh, proceeds through her vacation. Um, I haven't had a chance to just say happy pride. Uh, it is a great joy that I can be in this church as an openly gay man. So I appreciate that and uh, the love that's shown to me. Uh, yes. I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. How did I not get there first? I don't know. <laughs> happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everyone. It's in your bulletin. Uh, it's a it's a joy uh, joyous day for those that have, and perhaps a tough day for some. Uh, so, but uh, we certainly wish everyone here uh, a happy Father's Day, including Burdell. Burdell is mindful of the fact that we are uh, fast approaching the transition to bring the, our branch supper uh, back into uh, in, inside dining. Uh, we certainly are keeping uh, track of COVID and its variants and, and all of that, and, uh, but we feel like we are reaching a point where we can um, make that change. It will take some extra work. It will also bring great joys to uh, have people that have uh, told us time and again how much they miss the social aspect of what the branch supper offers it is we pray it every single uh, every meal it is not just a meal to put in people's bellies it is god's spirit sw uh, swirling there and, and, and blessing uh, people to get together so yes sir. i'll start with russell russell is a nephew and is in need of prayer he's very very sick okay and then the other prayer is a continuation that's janet who suffered the stroke and she's made it to rehab we know that's a that's a journey, and so we certainly are praying uh, for her through those through those steps. So thank you. Oh, um, uh, the other thing Edgar and Claudette said was uh, was last week their 65th wedding anniversary. I believe they just celebrated 65 uh, years. Uh, and. Uh, who helps out so much uh, in the meals, uh, and uh, it's uh, got a pin taken out of her foot surgery continues. I think she's now fully mobile and ready, and come July, she's already swooning in to help with some of those meals, and we're, uh, I'm incredibly blessed to have uh, that healing go so well. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you are creator of the ends of the earth, and yet you call us all your children. You are greater than we can begin to imagine, and yet you invite us to call you our Father. You have always loved us, and we are grateful. Father, we are grateful for the many blessings that you shower upon us. We are grateful for this community that is being able to, that is beginning to be able to sing together and gather together for coffee and share together in ways that we couldn't uh, even just months ago. We are grateful for all of the ministries, um, for the clothing ministry that continues, for uh, building bridges as we pray on its future, for um, the music ministry that we perform, and for the feeding 
ministry that we do. For our community meals, Father, we pray that you help us to discern our way forward so that we might um, offer meals uh, not only for souls, and not only for bellies, but that we might offer meals that are healthy, uh, that are healthy, that are safe, um, as we ponder what the Delta variant means and um, as we try to transition into this new stage of uh, COVID endemic COVID. Father, we pray gratitude for 63 years uh, of Edgar and Claudette together. We are grateful for the relationships that you give us and the strength and the love that they give us. Um, we are grateful also for Linda and Melissa and we ask traveling mercies that they might come home safely to us. Father, we thank you for our fathers who are present or absent, for those who have loved us fiercely and for all that we have fiercely loved. We thank you for all of those people who have taught us and raised us and helped us to grow. We ask that you would bless them and bless us, that where we are broken, we might be healed, and where we are healthy and wise and skillful, we might help others and build up your kingdom. Father, we pray for Bob, that he might um, have success and healing. We pray for Claudette that her healing would continue. We pray for Sue and for Camille that her headaches would ease and that she would have some more good life to enjoy. We pray for Russell. We pray for Janet and her rehab and we pray for Anne as she heals. We lift up these names and we lift up all of your children who are sick or in need that you might heal them in body, mind, and soul. Lord, we ask that you forgive us what we have done that we should not have done. We ask that you forgive us what we have left undone. Forgive our sins in thought, word, and deed. Heal us and transform us so that your will might be done and your name might be glorified. We ask all of this in the most precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now as Jesus taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm struck by this word tithes that we use, tithes and offerings. You know what a tithe is? 10%. It means 10%. Uh, there have been points in my life in which I've been able to give 10% to a church, and there have been points in my life in which I could not give 10%, even if my heat was lowered a couple of degrees, uh, because I wasn't meeting my mother's needs if I was giving 10% to the church. We ask from you, God asks from all of us, what we have to give. So if you have resources, if you are blessed with extra, then give those resources so that we can continue to feed and clothe and love the people in this community and strive to be a good 21st century witness to Christ's love for us. And if what you have is time to offer, then offer time. And if what you have is skills, then offer your skills. And we dedicate all that we bring to God and to God's glory in, in gratitude for what God has done for us. Will the ushers please come forward?
And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each, to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Thank you, Karen. So I don't remember my father. Um, my earliest memory, apparently my father was alive. Uh, I remember the first moon landing. I was born in July 68. I would have been <laughs> very, very young. And I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, I could have been, if I were a cartoon, I would have had a giant question mark in a bubble above my head. All I understood was that adult men were not supposed to bounce so high. I'd never seen men do that. So I didn't know why the silver men were bouncing. Uh, but I was telling this to a friend of mine that my earliest memory was the moon, believe it or not, really was the moon landing when I was one year old. And my mother was visiting at the time, I was in Virginia, and she got this look on her face and she said, your father, my father was a history teacher, your father insisted that this was an historic moment and he dragged you out of bed, you were sleeping, he dragged you out of bed and sat you in front of the television so that you could see that moon landing and I said, let her sleep, she's a baby, she'll never remember this. And I could just see my father in heaven going, one. <laughs> Mostly what I remember of my father is that every, every spring we would take a trip to the cemetery. Now my mother must have been full of grief, but I didn't remember him. So for me, it was a place where we planted flowers. Uh, we'd always bring a spade and a trowel and containers of water and, and plant a whole bunch of geraniums for the season. Um, and uh, there was an old section of the cemetery that went back to the civil, to the, I'm sorry, to the Revolutionary War, so that some of the flags that got put on stones were being put on the stones of Revolutionary War soldiers. That's how old the cemetery is. Um, now when I go, when I went to bury my mother last year, our section of the cemetery is covered in lichen and, and, and old in the same way, not quite in the same way that the 200 year old um, and there's a brand new section, uh, you know, off to the side that's being used um, actively. I don't remember my father, but I have the traces that he left behind him. I have a picture of my father um, holding me as a baby, just looking down at me with this look on his, in his eyes of love. Um, I guess uh, he had told my mother that he didn't like babies. And she caught him right after I was born, holding me and looking at me with this look on, on her face and, and on, my, on his face. And she said, I don't know. I thought you didn't like babies. And I guess my dad said to her, I don't like her because she's a baby. I love her because she's mine. Um, I have other people's memories of my father. People will stop me and say, I knew your dad. And this laugh, I'm sorry, that laugh that you hear sometimes, that's my father's, it's genetic, you can't get rid of it, it's there forever. Um, not learned, not learned, it came with the body. Uh, I remember my grandfather growing up because I didn't grow up with, um, I didn't grow up with my dad. My grandfather had an eighth grade education. His sisters all got college educations, but when he got to the end of eighth grade, his father took him out of school and said, you wouldn't want your sisters to have to work in a mill, would you? So he went to work in a mill so that his sisters could get college educations because men 
could pull themselves up and get a real job without a college education. But women at the time without a college education working in a mill, that was a dead end. You were there forever. But if you had a college education, you could become a teacher or a missionary or uh, I suppose a nurse. Everyone in my, everyone in my uh, family is teachers and missionaries. There were other men in my life that were important to me. I remember my uncle Russ, he smoked a pipe and every time I walk by someone smoking a pipe, that smell reminds me of my uncle Russ. He gave me, when I was very, very young, this little red um, fire truck uh, that I used to race around in. And um, he was worried when he gave it to me. It was the thing I wanted. He asked my mother what I, I wanted and that's the thing I wanted. And he said, but is that for girls, a fire truck? Um, well, it was for me. <laughs> um, it was gender bending at the time for a little girl to race around in a giant red fire truck, but uh, uh -huh. there you go. Um, and I remember my Uncle Bob, who was my mother's brother, who was formative in my life. He became a pastor as a second career. He did a whole career in the Air Force. And then when he left the Air Force, he went to Bangor Seminary and became um, a Baptist and then a, a, a congregational pastor. Um, and he's the one who made me understand that my call uh, could be delayed a little bit. Um, I would have been a terrible pastor in my 20s church. <laughs> I, needed, I needed some of the maturity that I've gained now, and hopefully I'll continue to gain uh, more maturity over the course of my life. But uh, um, my Uncle Bob is the one who let me know that that was something that was possible. My life was peopled with men and women who shared with me the things that they loved and who shared their gifts with me, their faith and their skills and their time and their heart, and they enriched my life and they made it possible for me to become the person that I am today. Did you have those people in your life? Not just fathers, but uncles and grandfathers and cousins and friends. Corinth that we're reading about in the scripture at the time was an urban urban seaport and it had so much diversity. It had rich people and people who weren't so rich. It had people who were well educated and people who were not. It had people who were skilled in trades and crafts and people who were just struggling to make ends meet. And the community was going through some difficulties when Paul wrote to them. Some had talents that were more public, that could be seen more easily, and some had like speaking or teaching. Hmm. And others had talents that were more behind the scenes. Jane has both public and pri private talents, but um, I'm thinking of Jane because if, if I weren't saying her name, not everybody would know that this sanctuary is beautiful on Sundays because of her and Sherry. So behind the scenes kinds of things that were happening without people sort of standing up in front and taking uh, credit for them, right? Um, so everybody after church should tell Jane how much they love her and appreciate her. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the church in Corinth was arguing amongst itself. Um, those with prominent positions and those with quieter positions started to um, grumble against each other. Um, and not be comfortable with each other. There was dissension, there was division, and there were resentments. There was not enough appreciation and love going on, and there was too much sort of jockeying for position. And so in the early 50s, reports of those quarrels made their way to Paul, who was in the city of Ephesus, as in Ephesians, who was in the city of Ephesus at the time. And he responded with this letter to the church in Corinth, to the Corinthians. And he basically said that gifts that are given to each person are given for the good of the whole. So that if you are good at speaking, it is not to your glory, but it is for the use of everyone. It is for God's glory. If you are good at making things beautiful, you're not doing it to puff yourself up. You're doing it for the glory of God. 
um, and to build God's community. Whatever gifts you have been given are not given for you to benefit yourself, but they're given to be shared with the community at large. Amen. This church is very good at that. Our differences are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Our differences are inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are holy, that we are different from one another, that we have different gifts, that we have different talents, that we have different loves. That is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I missed, his, I missed lifting up your pride um, in the prayer. But yes, that we are different from one another in all the ways that we are different from one another is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It comes from God. Love is love. Whatever gifts we have are for the good of the whole. The Greek says proto symphoron. What does that sound like? Symphoron. Symphony. The gifts that we have, the differences that we have, are in order to make a symphony. Because if I try to play a symphony all by myself, what you're going to get is a violin solo, huh? <laughs> but if all of us pick up whatever instruments we're playing, or, 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 or just lift our voices, then you get this harmony that is just so much more beautiful than just hearing a single note all the time, mm -hmm. a single tone, a single timbre. Um, so our gifts, our differences are inspired by the Holy Spirit and they are for the good of the whole so that we might make a symphony together, <laughs> so that we might be richer than we would be if everyone were the same. And as our physical bodies are dependent, uh, I can tell you if you lose a finger, the rest of your body is going, ah, <laughs> right? Whatever piece of your body you have, you, you need it, you use it, it's an, it, 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 it is affected by the rest of your body and vice versa. Whatever gifts our individual members bring affect the entire community. As we hurt, we hurt together. As we love, we love together. Whatever we share, we share together. Father's Day is a hard day for many people. Um, sometimes what we receive from our biological fathers isn't everything that one might hope. Or for me, Father's Day was always about absence, about what I didn't have. I never knew my father. But you can hear from what I said at the beginning that it takes a little bit of reflection to realize that even my father who was absent was not because he gave me these things that came down as a legacy even after he wasn't here. And it wasn't just my father in my life, but it was all of those other, I lifted up men because it's Father's Day, I don't know, um, but all of those other men and women in my life who shared their talents who shared their love, who shared their time, who shared their faith with me, that allow me to be who I am. And my most fervent hope is that I can share my faith and my love and my talents and my skills with other people so that that might build them up, so that we all share what we have and build up the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The legacy we leave is not just to our biological children. How we pass on our faith and our skills and how we use our time and how we relate in love matters. We honor those who have gone before us because they faced hardships, because they suffered hardships and they survived them and they got through them and they passed down to us nevertheless love and joy and hope and skill and a world that we can function in. And it is because their feet walked a fruitful path that we have before us a path to walk. And it is because their hearts remained true that we can come together in faith. It's no accident that we're in 1 Corinthians 12. Probably one of the best known passages in the Bible comes from 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, probably you've heard it at a wedding. Um, 
it so poetically evokes the endurance of love. And so in every trouble we face, in every interaction we have, like those who have gone before us, we hope to leave a legacy in the beauty that we create, in the stories that we tell, in the traces that remain in, people, um, in, in people's memories after we are gone, and in the relationships that we foster, and in the love that shines in and through us, and that binds us together. So church, I ask you, what will our legacy be? Faith, hope, and love, these are the three things that abide. And so we, may, we meet, may we leave a legacy uh, that is full of hope, that is founded in faith, and that is overflowing with love. Amen, church? Amen. Our closing hymn is Faith of Our Fathers.
Bless the 